The Princess of Wales Controversy Experts warn TikTok ban could embolden authoritarian censorship. New Welsh leader honoured to be Europe's first black national leader. Boeing 737-800 was missing external panel when it landed in Oregon. Popular weight loss drugs out of reach for many who need them. Volcano in Iceland erupts for fourth time in three months. Hello, I'm Johnny. Thank you for joining us on Funny News. It's Monday, March 18th, and here are your top stories. The public absence of Catherine, Princess of Wales, has grown from a niche royal watcher concern to an international punchline in a matter of weeks. While Kensington Palace said her January abdominal surgery was planned and indicated she would be out of the public eye through March, several unusual details, grainy photos, an altered image, vague medical information, irregular updates from the British royal family have kept the public guessing. Catherine's so-called disappearance has led TikTok and ex-users to swan dive into bizarre conspiracy theories and jokes so thickly intertextual it makes one wonder if social media really does give us brainworms. Droves of amateur detectives have crafted timelines and deep dives into the princess's movements over the last few months, combining real concern with outlandish conspiracy. Regular people moonlighting as photo forensic specialists have suggested that recent images of Kate are fabricated, spinning theories on where she actually is and who they think is trying to cover up the truth. After a Mother's Day photo of the princess and her three children was believed to have been altered, and subsequently pulled by news agencies, things started to get more serious and more unhinged. Typically complimentary British media outlets began to ask more pointed questions. American TV shows openly made fun of what was quickly becoming a royal mess, even trotting out theories that had previously been the exclusive fodder of gossip enthusiasts. Kate still hasn't been seen in public since December. Experts warn that the proposed TikTok ban working its way through Congress could embolden authoritarian censorship abroad and shatter the United States' reputation as an international champion of free speech. The House of Representatives passed the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Control Applications Act on Wednesday. The bill still needs a Senate vote and then to be signed by President Joe Biden. According to the bill's proponents, if signed into law, ByteDance, TikTok's Chinese parent company, would either be forced to sell TikTok or the app would be banned from app stores. U.S. Officials say the driving motivation to pass such a bill is to prevent TikTok from being used to disseminate Chinese propaganda or collect information on U.S. citizens for Chinese government use. But to some critics of the bill, a ban would cede America's moral authority when it condemns other countries over limiting their citizens' internet access. The U.S. has long promoted the open internet as a soft power tool that promotes freedom of speech and the exchange of ideas, in contrast with more authoritarian countries' approaches, like China's Great Firewall, Russia's Runet and Iran's Halal Internet. The U.S. was a founding member of the Freedom Online Coalition, a 39-nation group that advocates for the international adoption of an internet free of censorship or political disruption. Last year, the White House announced its commitment to a Declaration for the Future of the Internet, made by a group of 60 countries opposed to authoritarian control of the internet. Von Geffen won the Welsh Labour Party leadership contest on Saturday and is said to become the first black leader of Wales' semi-autonomous government. Gavin, who is currently Welsh Economy Minister, narrowly beat Education Minister Jeremy Miles in a race to replace First Minister Mark Drakeford. Drakeford announced late last year he would step down once a replacement was chosen. Gavin, 50, won 51.7 percent of the votes cast by members of the party and affiliated trade unions, and Miles, 48.3 percent. Once he is confirmed next week by the Welsh Parliament, the Senate, where Labour is the largest party, Gething will become the fifth first minister since Wales's national legislature was established in 1999. Gething, son of a Welsh father and a Zambian mother, will be the first black leader of a government in the UK and, by some definitions, of any European country. Gething said in his victory speech, Today, we turn a page in the book of our nation's history. A history we write together, not just because I have the honor of becoming the first black leader in any European country, but because the generational dial has jumped too. Once Gething is in the post, three of the UK's four governments will have non-white leaders. UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has Indian heritage, 
while Scottish First Minister Hamza Youssef was born to a Pakistani family in Britain. United Airlines issued a statement confirming that Boeing 737-800 to operated by the airline was missing an external panel when it landed in Medford, Oregon on Friday. No injuries were reported, no emergency was declared, and there was no indication of a problem during the flight. The Federal Aviation Administration said it's investigating. Details about the missing panel were not provided. The plane is a relative of a Boeing aircraft, the 737 MAX 9, that lost a door block in flight in January. But it is not the same model. According to flight tracker FlightAware.com, Friday's late morning flight started as scheduled in San Francisco en route to Medford and landed 17 minutes early. NBC affiliate Kobe of Medford reported that the aircraft was scheduled to be used for a subsequent flight to Denver, but that flight has been delayed. The station said Medford Airport personnel searched the grounds unsuccessfully for the missing panel. There were 139 passengers and six crew members on board. The dummy panel is used in place of an emergency exit where one is unneeded because the aircraft has been configured for a passenger capacity below the number that would trigger more mandatory exits. Dr. Lori Dumatia, a bariatric medicine specialist in Norman, Oklahoma, feels the frustration of her patients as they struggle to lose weight. Almost all of her patients at a weight loss clinic in the suburbs south of Oklahoma City could be helped by the new class of medications such as Ozempic and Wegovy, if they could afford them. What many of them haven't done is take a monthly injection of semiglutide or terzeptide. Dematia can give them a prescription for Wegovy or Zepbon, but that's just the beginning. They then face a complicated, often frustrating battle to pay for the expensive medications. About half of the adults in the United States have obesity or are severely obese, a crisis that means more people are at risk of heart disease, diabetes, or some types of cancer. According to new data, there are stark geographic and racial disparities in who is able to get their hands on semaglutide, the active ingredient in Ozempic and Wegovy. An estimated 85% of semaglutide prescriptions were dispensed to white people across the country, results from an analysis of more than 4 million prescriptions written nationwide for the drug in 2023 showed. According to the healthcare analytics company Purple Lab, black adults, who have significantly higher rates of diabetes and obesity, received around 12% of the prescriptions. A volcano in Iceland erupted Saturday evening for the fourth time in three months, sending orange jets of lava into the night sky. The Meteorological Office had warned for weeks that magma, semi-molten rock, was accumulating under the ground, making an eruption likely. National broadcaster RUV said hundreds of people were evacuated from the Blue Lagoon Thermal Spa, one of Iceland's top tourist attractions, when the eruption began. No flight disruptions were reported at nearby Kaflafvik, Iceland's main airport. The eruption site is a few miles northeast of Grindavik, a coastal town of 3,800 people about 30 miles southwest of Iceland's capital, Reykjavik, that was evacuated before the initial eruption in December. A few residents who had returned to their homes were evacuated again Saturday. Grindavik was evacuated in November when the Svartsengi volcanic system awakened after almost 800 years with a series of earthquakes that opened large cracks in the ground north of the town. The volcano eventually erupted in December 18, sending lava flowing away from Grindavik. A second eruption that began on January 14 sent lava toward the town. Defensive walls that had been bolstered after the first eruption stopped some of the flow but several buildings were consumed by the lava. The answer for last Friday was C, facade. Squalor and poverty lay behind the city's glittering facade. Did you answer correctly? Now let's delve into the news of the Princess of Wales controversy. Number one, punchline. For example, the punchline was cracking me up. Number two, outlandish. They appeared at parties in outlandish clothes. Number three, conspiracy. 阴谋策划密谋. 
Seven men, all from Bristol, admitted conspiracy to commit arson. Next, we have a multiple choice question for everyone to practice. Which answer would you choose? You can write your answer in the comment section. The correct answer will be announced tomorrow. And that's all for today's Funday News. Be sure to tune in to Funday News from Monday to Friday and click the link below to join Funday for free. I'm Johnny Wu, your host. I'll see you next time.